Hi, um, my name is Varak Rubanik, Rubanis on Second Life, and I'm here to show you some techniques that I've learned as a conglomerate of various techniques that I've learned um, constructing outfits on Second Life. Um, this is just for, not for pieces, it's just for skin type stuff. The tools I'll be using is ZBrush and um, Photoshop Extended. Um, this is just for basics and it might help with initial stuff on the outfit. Uh, I could be getting into pieces later, but for right now, I figured I'd start with this. Um, as you can see, I have a ZBrush on, and I'm going to create um, a pre-made for ZBrush uh, character. Unfortunately, the <coughs> the UVs in Second Life characters are all mashed together. However, ZBrush does a pretty good job in interpreting what's the head, what's the body, and what's the torso, as you can see here. I'm going to start with the torso, and uh, it doesn't matter how you mold it right now, so there's no, it's not necessary any molding. Um, it's subdivided five times, but I'm going to start out with the torso. Um, I'm not going to be saying what I'm, you have to be fairly familiar with ZBrush, you can um, email me or whatever if you are very confused, but you have to be fairly familiar with both programs. Uh, I'm not going to get that basic with it. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to hit the Matte Cap Gorilla. Uh, the technique used in canned mushrooms to capture, um, or burn in I should say, the um, the texture is really good um, in taking it to Photoshop, which I'll be showing you. Uh, I'm going to bring the subdivision level up to about 5, which is pretty subdivided. Um, so you can see it's nice and smooth. Um, technique I'm going to be using uh, will be with using the app link, but before I do that, I'm going to create a new texture, which it has already. Um, i colorize. So you'll actually see in here when I re-import the texture uh, piece by piece, it will be reapplying to it. It's kind of cool. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the app link. Um, oops. Um, I'm going to clear all these for right now. <clears throat> and I'm going to do it from scratch. So I'm going to make a front and a back. So it automatically does the back. Um, for the sides, uh, I'll do left and right. So do right. And it automatically does the left. Uh, I don't necessarily have to do top and bottom. Um, I get some artifacting on the top if I do that. However, we can see how it, it manages. Um, we can adjust it from there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it into, I'm going to hit the app link, hit OK. It takes a snapshot of the different perspectives. Uh, and this is the one I did previously to test. So you can see the ha um, successfully um, transferred it to Photoshop. And the technique used in canned mushrooms is that you duplicate the um, the shader, bring it down, and then you merge down. So now this shader is actually applied to the white version uh, without any shader on it. I'll show you, which is this is the white version, and here's with the shader on it. So you're pretty much just duplicating it. And I'm going to pause the video and do all of them so you uh, spare on time. You don't have to watch me do all that. Okay, so as you can see, I did all of them. Now I'm going to just save it. and go back into ZBrush and re-enter and you pretty much just hit, keep the fade on, hit accept <clears throat> and as you can see it's starting to build it on the shader here which is kind of cool I'm also going to recommend going to Shiny Life and getting, I'm sure there's a lot of equipment on there that we can um, find or you can find that um, makes life a lot easier. One of the things I got was a, I don't, know if I, I don't remember if I got it off Shiny Life, but I got a, um, a character that already has the UV maps and everything for a Second Life 
character on Photoshop. Um, I don't know where my male is, but it doesn't really matter between the male and female unless you're really designing something. I prefer the female because you can make something androgynous that goes with both genders, and it doesn't really matter because there's not that much substantial difference in the geometry. Um, so you can see it does, it's all very dark right now because I have the matte cap on, so I'm going to put it to a flat shader and see how it turned out. So, as you can see, there is some um, problems which um, I'm okay with here because I could take it into Photoshop and correct these problems very easily. You can even see there's some uh, stretching in the um, texture. And again, you got for the most part, uh, I could redo this in ZBrush using um, other capture techniques, taking it into Photoshop from here and bring it back in, which you can do. However, uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I want to show how it would be nice to do it in Photoshop using the Photoshop brushes. So you could just take it out of Photoshop and bring it directly into um, Second Life if you want. So I'm going to clone the texture and um, export it and you can do it, I'm going to put it into an example character. I've already done once before, but I'm going to replace it um, as a torso um, in a Photoshop format, which is fine. And what I'm going to do now is go into Photoshop, and I'm going to open... This was pre-made. I made a slight uh, alteration to it. It's femaleav.psd. Um, there are several floating around for... Um, for Second Life, and pretty much what you want to do is show all menus, and then in the render settings, make sure you have two things. You have, a second, so you can see what your skin looks like, and you don't have to worry about the shading that Photoshop would give it by default. You want unit texture and diffuse, so. Uh, hit OK on that. I made it default on this character. So pretty much these are your three materials or right over here, which is kind of cool the way it happens. I've constructed a Tron outfit this way very easily by using this technique where I had a material top. If you double click on it, it will, for some reason, this is thinking a lot. So, um, all right, so if I double click on the top, oops. Um, it will show me, um, this is a template by Robin, uh, Robin Wood, obviously, but it's applied to the 3D mesh very well. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open, um, let's see, uh, my example kind of the torso, and I'm going to take the torso, and first I'm going to hit Control T with it. And I'm going to flip it vertically because that's the way the map goes. And I'm going to apply the settings and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it in this material top. Now it's much bigger. I made the map watch bigger than um, it is in Second Life, so I'm just going to shrink it down by hand here. And <coughs> just snap it in place. Now you can see there's still problems with the skin here, and for this example, I'll just show you how to get rid of a lot of the, the uh, problems that you can, that you have here. Um, I could take out the um, with a little bit of feathering. I could take out the white and just see the map from underneath if I chose to, so you could see where it's going. But I found that the feathering needs a little. You need you need to expand a little bit. That's all. But I'm gonna keep it for now. Going back. So, um, good shout out to Lillian, Liliana Merman for giving me uh, a little bit of techniques using Photoshop and Second Life. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the smudge tool. I'm just going to vibrate it a little bit back and forth. Um, I'm using a Wacom tablet, so it makes it a little bit easier. Shrink my brush a bit. 
I'm not going to be worried about its perfection at the moment because this is just an example. So I don't have to go nuts. But as you can see, I vibrate a little bit and just kind of cleans it up um, here and there. Uh, so I can smooth that a lot. And you can use this technique with almost anything. Um, so what I could do is, since it's now in a second layer, I can go back to the female torso and it applies it to the character. You see, so now you have a real, a real time update of what your character looks like. Now you can use all the Photoshop tools in the 3D space, which is very nice. So you can't just zoom in; you have to use their 3D tools. You have to excuse my computer; it's capped at two gigabytes of RAM. So I can either do it this way if I wanted to, using let's say a stamp tool, and I'll take a little bit of the um, surrounding area and stamp it in. And I could take the healing brush and do something very similar to mash it in there. So you can see it's not too bad. And then I can go back to that top material. And you can see sort of it does the same thing. And it's good for edges between top and bottom and neckline and all that. So you can see these stretching artifacting, which I could kind of just get rid of that way. You don't have to worry about it bleeding over the side a little bit. It's not terrible because you can go back to the 3D and see how you did. If it goes over and you see the white, then you can know what to do. Now the real beauty about this technique is, um, you can see some of the white here, but it doesn't matter. So the real beauty about what I'm doing here is that I can actually create a second layer, and you can make it whatever you want in terms of second life, but I found, um, let's say I want to make just a line across the torso for, let's say I was doing my Tron outfit, take it, put a, um, a yellow line there, even if I wanted to extend this yellow line across the back, go back to the 3D mode, and there it is. Didn't exactly line up because I didn't have it uh, all the way across. However, you get you get the main gist of it. That I can actually do that, and I can actually correct this in real time in the, in the 3D environment. So I can make almost anything I want within the 2D environment and bring it into real-time 3D environment. I could also make layers in here if I wanted to. Um, so I made a new layer here and I, I can actually um, let's see I can even do this if I wanted to fill it in so I can actually put something on here in real time in this. It's, it's a little difficult to work in the space, that's why I recommend the 2D space. Um, tools up here. And it's a little difficult to roll around with this character in it, but you have a custom position where you can customize left, right, top, bottom, back, front. It's not too bad. Um, and then go back to the material top and you can see the 3D update on it. So again, you get the fall off from the position so it's not all the greatest, but you could be almost any resolution so you can bring it in at just lower res lowest resolution. Um, that's pretty much the, the whole tutorial here. I'll be getting to objects another time. At, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, bye bye.